wasn't any longer just an idea in a room in Florida. It was the creation of an entire marketplace. Risk could now be easily traded. It fueled a worldwide credit boom. Most people in finance assume risk can be eliminated. But all you can do is move it around from one party to another party. The world will see that globalization has now allowed what would have been once contained in one or two irresponsible nations to affect everyone in the world all at once. When credit stops, trade stops. Just-in-time manufacturing that was key to successful giants like Walmart and Apple will now be its death nail as the logistical system seizes up. Without a functioning economy, the stock market becomes a farce as people start gambling on the valuations in the future when they have no clue what the dollar is going to be worth, what earnings are real, or even what will be the outcome of the political and global landscape. Major holders of bonds will seek to dump them as inflation destroys the real returns on the debt. This will be met at first with more monetization from the world's central banks as they flood fresh money printed out of nowhere. This not only increases the quantity of money, but the velocity of money, as dollar holders rush to spend those newly printed dollars on anything real. Even mining stocks will suffer. They will face tremendous headwinds from expensive to scarce energy, expensive to scarce credit markets, and the taxation, regulation, confiscation of the land that they produce from. The reality of no credit markets, suspension of trade, energy interruptions, and the social, political, and military consequences of that reality will be no different for Berkshire Hathaway, Microsoft, and especially the very capital and energy intensive mining sector that produce real wealth. The juniors are a terrible investment left only to gamblers as their credit lines necessary for exploration seize up. Even the bigger miners are a very credit and energy intensive business. Even the larger miners that have cash flow still rely heavily on the credit and energy markets. Even in the best of times with relative peace and easy credit, the mining business is very difficult. I continue to scratch my head at the very bright precious metal investors that think somehow their precious metal stocks are going to perform well in an era of riots and war with supply, energy, and credit disruptions. I understand that the valuation of their assets could go up and that they will increase their cash flow, but what if the cash that runs their business is dying? How is that reality going to be suspended for them? I believe eventually most mining assets throughout the world will be confiscated by either taxation, regulation, or nationalization. It is far better to invest in already mined metal with no counterparty risk than the cheapest or best silver mining producer in the most stable part of the world when we enter the societal anger phase of the awakening. Maybe then precious metals investors will see the value of the silver bullet and the silver shield as it has the opposite consciousness of the mess that we have. The answer to manipulated stocks is real tangible metals. The answer to leverage is no leverage. The answer to counterparty risk is the alloidal title metals and other real assets provide. The answer to collective tyranny is individual liberty. To those that hold real wealth, they will see the panic in the paper markets and do the rational thing and not sell their assets as they do not want the paper dollars that everybody else is trying to get rid of. This will further spin the hyperinflationary cycle as not only the amount and the velocity of money increases, but the available goods and services will dry up and the markets those dollars can be spent in get smaller and smaller. Faster and faster down the toilet bowl the money goes until it's not even worth holding on to. The effect of this on humanity will be one of anger that will manifest itself from personal crime, societal riots, and even national wars.